Hi everyone, welcome back to the Cypress series. From today onwards, we are going to start with the framework series. In today's video, I'm going to tell you about the framework architecture. So this video is specifically for the beginners. If you're a beginner, you learn everything. It really, it, it's like a zero to hero. You are going to learn everything from the scratch, how you are going to create a framework, how you're going to install a Cypress, so everything would be covered in this video. And if you are a, if you are a experienced one, I'm sure there will be uh, some points which will be new for you as well. You can learn a lot of topics and you can share your inputs also in the comment section. So let's start. So I've already created a basic box over here. So this is my mind map. First of all, we will try to visualize it. We will try to understand from the pictorial representation what we are going to do because it becomes easier for you to create a framework later on. Otherwise, if you don't have this picture in your mind, then it is, it is difficult for you to do everything. So we will create a pictorial representation. We will learn everything, what we are going to do, how we are going to do. We'll see everything over here, right? So the first step would be GitHub. So GitHub is the most famous and most used platform for the version controlling. So I'll be using GitHub as part of the series. So in GitHub, when I say about GitHub, first step would be creating a repository in the GitHub because we are creating the series right from the scratch, from the start. So this is more with respect to if you are joining a company or if you are joining a project. So these are the things which which you face in your day-to-day -day task also, right? So that's why we need to under, we need to understand the basics also. It's not like I'm installing Cypress and telling you from there. I want you to understand how you work in a company in a real-time project also. That's why I'm covering GitHub also over here. So first step would be creating a repository on the GitHub. Then after creating a repository, we will clone the repository on our local machine, right? So this would be my second step. After this, next step would be once I clone the GitHub repository, I'll be installing the Cypress. I know I have covered this installation of Cypress in the previous video, but this is a framework series and I want you to know, understand everything from the scratch. Okay, so this is a kind of zero to hero series for you. So we will also cover installing Cypress. So currently the Cypress version is 12.16 and uh, so this framework series is also more focused on the latest version of Cypress. So that is if you were using Cypress version 10 and above then you can refer to the video but if you're using version below 10, Cypress uh, version below 10 then this framework series might not be applicable for you because you, are, you might have to change something related to the configuration files. The files are slightly uh, different in below versions. Right, the code can be seen, but the configuration files might be different in the lower version. Right, next step is installing the Cypress. After installing the Cypress, we'll be using one famous design pattern, which is page object model. So, this is a very famous page object model, which is very successful, mostly used in uh, is very much used in Selenium, and it has a very success story. Also, we'll have used page object model, and it's very successful in uh, Selenium. So, we'll try to uh, we'll create page object model over here also. The benefit of page object model is to segregate your actions, locators, and test scripts differently, right? So what is a normal standard which we follow? We follow AAA, which is act, arrange, and assert, right? So in this case, our comes in a sequence where A is your arrange. So arrange means is visiting a URL, right? This is your init code. And then comes the act. Act is basically your actions, whatever you perform on the page. So actions can be clicking on a button or uh, typing anything, right? So this is uh, this is what we say: arrange, act, and arrange, act, and a. Uh, the final A is for the assertion. So in page class over here, like we are using page object model, we'll have a page class where we will write all our locators. So locators are basically used to. Uh, identify the element on the page if you are clicking on submit button or if you are passing any input to a text box so we'll be using web locators for that along with this we'll be using action so actions can be clicking on the button uh, type or clearing a, a type box so all these are actions and uh, these are defined in the page class we'll also define along with this the visit we can also create a common method for visiting a url right and along with others clicking and type so this will all be stored in the page class next step is our test script so test script is basically will be covering your 
the final a which is your assertion so all the assertions would be all the assertions would be covered in your test script so let's say you want to verify if the text is is matching with the expected value or not right right all these things we could perform in the test script and you can call your you will will call the page class we we'll call the locators over here and then we'll compare we'll perform the assertion so we'll also call the page class in our test scripts fine so this is page object model and the benefit of page object model is let's say you are uh, will take example of famous e-commerce website only where you want to perform a user journey you want to test a user journey where user logins and then searches for a product add to cart and then proceed to the checkout so for all this step let's say these are the if you want to consider these as an individual test case where you want to uh, search for a button right and you want to verify the price next test case can be you want to uh, add a product and you want to add multiple products to, to the cart right and you want to perform all this action as a logged in user so for all these cases you have to use login login steps right we, the login steps are common across all this every file you can reuse it from the page class so you can call it from the page class and reuse it in your you know test files so this is a benefit because you segregate your locator and action in one class and you write all the assertion in one class right and this is this helps you in the maintainability in the reusability you can reuse your code and maintain also let's say you want to change the locator instead of changing in every test file you will just change in the one page class so this is very helpful in the reusability and the maintainability also fine so this is for the page object model next thing is fixtures so fixtures we are going to use for the data driven testing so data driven testing i mean let's say you are filling a registration form in registration form there are multiple fields first name last name address details pin code postal code all this all these things right so all these things instead of passing it into your file into your test file you can call it from the fixture file in cypress by default we have a fixture folder so you don't have to create an object and call you can directly use cy.fixtures to call the fixture file right or you can import it also directly so we can create all our data we can uh, store all the data in the fixtures file so data like login credentials by login credentials i mean username password right username uh, where we can write username password registration form details which is like address details address uh, first name and extra so all these details you can keep it in your fixture folder fine next thing is after creating so till now what we did we installed cypress we performed action we created our test script everything is done we clicked on a button we verified we asserted we performed the assertion also everything is done next thing is to get the reports so for reporting part we will be using mocha awesome report which is an html report so we will be using mocha awesome report this is an html report so in the html report you can see all the steps mentioned what are the cases which are getting passed or which are getting failed all the steps we will see in the mocha awesome report fine so this is with respect to the reporting next part is our configuration so this is for the like i mentioned we we'll, we are using uh, latest version of cypress so for cypress version 10 and above so our configuration file file is cypress.config.js so in this file you can keep all your global configuration by global configuration i mean let's say you want to uh, configure retries so let's say you want to let if your test case executes first time it fail but you want to execute it one more time is instead of writing it for every in every test file you can configure it globally in the cypress.config.js so we'll be using cypress.config.js we'll be using uh, retries we'll perform all the retries configuration over there we can also define our common url in the configuration file we can also define the timeouts let's say you want to define the timeouts for uh, uh, page page load timeout or uh, all the timeouts you can defined in the cypress.config.js right apart from this we uh, what we'll do so this is everything what we did now is with respect to your everything is on your local version till now right you are executing your test cases you are 
fetching the data from the picture file you are getting the reports you are fetching uh, changing the configuration you are getting everything from the on the local machine next step is which is very important which is ci cd pipeline so for ci cd pipeline we will be using github actions so github actions is one of the famous uh, ci cd pipeline which is available and this is uh, used today uh, it is mostly used by developers in qas today and uh, this is widely used because we can directly use it in the github you don't have to use go to some other platform to run your ci cd pipeline it can be executed directly in the github only so that's a good option for running your ci cd pipeline right so we'll be using so we'll be using github actions next step is the final step which is after executing your test cases on ci cd pipeline on github actions over here so you want a report also let's say we we are executing our test cases we are getting a report also but you have to go to that platform to check the report right but we want something where we can get the report so we will be integrating it with the slack so slack is one of the most commonly used and one of the most famous uh, communication platform so we will in this series we will be using we'll see the integration with the slack so in slack you will get the reports generated in the github in github actions right so this in the ci cd pipeline when your test case would be executed let's say you are uh, based on the scheduling you are scheduling scheduling your test cases over here maybe um, every morning or uh, night basis or on every push right whenever you push your code your test case executes on in headless mode on the github so once your test case executes it will send a report in slack channel with that html link to the mock awesome report and you can see the detailed report over there right whoever have access to that they can check the reporting so this is the architecture we are going to cover as part of the framework series everything is in detail we are going to learn over here right right from the github how we are going to uh, create a github repository how we are going to clone the repository so after we do all this step we will uh, we will add all the data to the we'll push all the code to the github so we will add the files in the github repository next we will commit it we will push right so we'll see all the steps so this is this is the basic framework which we, you should know from the interview perspective from if you are joining a new company or if you are an existing company also if you are uh, learning cypress or any framework so this is basic framework structure which generally is used for uh, all the automation uh, tools in the market but uh, for we are learning cypress over here so this is something for with respect to the cypress let's say cypress.config.js right so you should know all these things we are going to cover everything everything from the scratch from uh, in detail so i'll create videos from the from next video on which i'll create a detailed video right so it will not be a single video because it will be too long i'll create videos on the series i'll create a series of videos where we'll start from the github then we'll install cypress then we'll use page object model fixtures uh, cypress.config.js we'll also see the porting part ci cd pipeline and integrating with the slack after you are done after you learned everything over here what is mentioned over here you will you will have that confidence to face any interview or to join any company because it will give you a next level confidence like you know cypress you know how to create a framework from the scratch you can say yes but you have to practice it otherwise by just by watching the video you cannot say you will not get that confidence you have to practice it along with the videos you have to practice it and create your github repository push your code wherever you watch a video push all the all the practice that uh, practice that those things right and push your code to the github repository and then you will see how you will see the difference in yourself so i hope you understand the concept you understand the architecture which i explained today in the next video we will learn we'll start with the framework series right we we'll learn everything with in detail and uh, if you like it please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends